Okay guys, this is Jim's tips and tricks and uh, a little bit of advice. Uh, when, when you're travelling out here in the desert, it's a really good idea to go to the local service stations. All travel in the desert anywhere in Australia or probably anywhere in the world. Um, well, we, I dropped into Mount Dare on the way across the Simpson here. We're going from the west to the east. I've actually got a couple of friends with me, which is uh, quite unusual. I've got two vehicles this time. I always go in and have a talk to the guys to see what the problems are. And uh, they always tell you the problems, what's going. They don't want to be wasting their time coming out towing people in out of the desert. They want you to go and have a good trip, enjoy yourself, and do the right thing all the way across. And that's digging your holes and burning your paper. Well, that's for another video. But one of the biggest problems that these, these areas have is people getting there not prepared. You must prepare properly, and um, there's a lot of people to read a few books, and they seem to become bloody uh, armchair experts about travelling in the outback. And uh, I get a little annoyed at them, because um, they are the ones that I end up playing and helping, and I'm sick of helping them. I had to give some guys some diesel the other day, so they'd run out of fuel. Now, what has to happen is that you sit down and you look at your map, and you add up the kilometres, and you, and you look at this, oh yeah, I've got 263 plus 166 k's across the Simpson, and I need so much fuel per kilometre, so I'll need X number of litres. Now, that, that sounds quite logical and quite, and quite acceptable, and you think it'll work. But there's several, several stupid things about that. The first thing is, you're going to be running soft tyres. Because you are running soft tyres, the rolling diameter of your wheels are going to be smaller. So you're going to use a lot more fuel. You're probably going to use anywhere but 15 to 20% more fuel just on that little trick alone. Then you're going to start climbing sand dunes. When you start climbing sand dunes and you're pushing through soft sand, you use a bit more fuel still. And uh, if you've got a friend travelling with you, and uh, Murphy says it's always his, him that gets stuck, not me. That, that always how I never get stuck. I get, I get held up occasionally. But they, they get stuck and you've got to snatch them out. That's more fuel. You've got to go back, snatch them out, etc. Now, if you don't take this into the equations and you just work it out so I've got enough there plus about 10 litres, oh, I'll be all right, you're going to come to grief just on that trip alone. But worse still, if you get a rainstorm across like we've got in front of us now, I've been watching this while we pulled up a wee bit early today, we've got a rainstorm crossing the desert in front of us here now. These rainstorms can amount from a a torrential downpour, flooding and God knows what else, to virtually just a wet track. Either way, it can be a problem. Now all of a sudden you're going to get up to the little sand ditch between the, the sand dunes and you're going to find you can't drive straight across, you've got to drive round. Now some of these is only a couple of hundred metres to go around the water and sometimes you have to go four or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten kilometres up, up, the, up the side of the sand dune and then come back around the other side to get around the water. Now, when this starts to happen to you and you're running on, you know, the, the, the exact number of litres, uh, Murphy says you're going to run out of fuel and you're not going to make it. And what you're going to do then is you're going to endanger someone else's life by asking for fuel off them, which they've calculated out, and uh, you're, you're just being stupid. Stupid, and you're causing problems. So do your figures. Do your calculations. Make sure you've got the fuel plus a fair bit extra. One of the things I've always done and trust me, I've learnt by the hard way. When I come out here, I calculate how much fuel I'll need, and I'll literally put 30% more on top, and that includes the extra fuel I'm going to use in the sand. I always, always calculate the food that I need for the, the time, and it's going to take me six days or seven days across here. I'll calculate that I need seven days food, plus a couple of days in case we, we take our time and stop somewhere for, you know, for whatever reason. But I also make sure that I've got at least two weeks extra food on board. Now the extra food is only basic rice and noodles and stuff, but it'll fill your belly. The reason I do that is if we get halfway across this desert and then we get two or three inches of rain dumped on us, we are over on the Canning stock route last year, we had six inches of rain dumped on us. <laughs> we found a sand dune that stayed there for a few days and sort of dried up. You're going to have to do the same when you're out here. And if you've got no food, you're going to go hungry. So do your preparation properly. 
make sure you've got the appropriate equipment talk to a few people go on YouTube and look at some of the YouTube videos and I'll tell you what you can always pick the idiots going through the mud and smashing their machinery <laughs> do your research sit down and think about it but don't necessarily go to these joints that are selling you all this junk because I'll sell you everything in the world and 90% of it you'll never use so do your research Talk to some of the people that do this on a regular basis or have done it in the past. And you'll get some good advice and you'll save yourself a lot of money and you'll save a lot of people a lot of problems, but they don't have to go out and tow you back. I'm tired of towing people in because they've done stupid things. You stop doing them, we won't have to tow you. You do the right thing and the farmers and so forth, the landowners, won't keep locking everything up. Because if we don't all get together and start doing the right thing and reporting the morons that are doing the wrong things, we will lose access to so many of these places. And uh, I might be getting long in the tooth now and I may not have too many more years of travelling, but I've got grandkids and I want them to be able to get out and see some of the places that I've seen. And unless we all do the right thing, none of us will have our grandkids going there.